Nidorinars and Nidorinos, it is King Nido here and welcome to the beautiful Akalo Island where today the Kony Kony Spring are trying to put a halt to the Jubilife Venom's three game winning streak as the Venom start out with Roserade and Nido Queen. It is Rillaboom and Serena staying out for the Kony Kony Spring and Rillaboom with that grassy surge ability immediately sets up the grassy terrain. But the Kony Kony Spring are currently tied for 12th. They are still in contention to qualify. In the Masters 8, as Roserade immediately goes for the Bulldoze, which hits everybody on the field. It's actually super effective on its own teammate, Nido Queen. Gonna lower Nido Queen's speed. It's not very effective on Rillaboom or Serena, but did get the critical hit there on Serena. It's also gonna lower the speed here of both grass type Pokemon. Immediate stat changes in this matchup as Rillaboom and going for the gear grind now onto Roserade. That is a fantastic first hit of this multi hit move. It's got two, it will only get two, but that is some big damage there as Nido Queen going for the sweet kiss here onto Serena. It is gonna cr cr connect here, sorry, and it is gonna leave Serena confused who needs to shake it off so it doesn't do any damage to itself. It will be successful and goes for the mega punch now onto Roserade, and Roserade is eliminated from this matchup already. But before Roserade leaves the field, its Poison Point ability will be activated, leaving Serena to take continuous damage from that Poison as Rillaboom gets back to full strength with that Grassy Terrain being activated. Nido Queen gets a little bit of health restored as well, and Serena gets back to full strength, but that Poisoning activates and takes it back away, doing more damage than what was restored. As Tentacruel now comes out for the Jubilee Venom and immediately goes for the submission onto Serena. Gets a little bit of good damage in there, but does get the recoil on itself as Rillaboom sets up the wrap onto Nido Queen. Nido Queen's going to be taking consistent damage from that wrap in between turns as Nido Queen going for the Razor Leaf will hit both Grass type Pokemon. Actually gets a better hit on Serena. Another critical hit, in fact, landing on Serena, who snaps out of that confusion and goes for the block onto Nido Queen. Nido Queen can no longer escape from this matchup. And there is that grassy terrain being activated for everyone. But as I said, the Jubilee Venom three game winning streak. They're currently in sixth place. They want the victory here. They want to try and get up into an elite four position as we get closer to those championship trials. And so here we are, everyone having their health restored. But again, Serena still suffering from that poison, which is doing more damage than what the grassy terrain is restoring. As Nero Queen suffers the tiniest bit. Apologies, more than I expected. Chip damage from the Rapid. There's a Poison Jab here from Tentacruel. Super effective there on the Rillaboom. And now Rillaboom's left poisoned as well. Both grass type Pokemon are going to be suffering from that poison as Rillaboom. Going for a status condition setter of its own with the Glare onto Tentacruel. Leaving it paralyzed. This will slow down the Poison Water type. There's a play rough now from Nido Queen. Leaves Serena on the barest threads. And even with the critical hit, couldn't get the job done. Serena with the Swift will hit both Poison type Pokemon. And here is that grassy terrain. I do not think it will do enough to save Serena in this matchup, though. And that would mean that the poison types get their first elimination of this matchup, thanks to that poison point ability that was activated earlier on. Here's the poison being activated on Rillaboom, doing good chip damage there. And now Serena needs to hold on, but is unable to. So Serena is taking out this matchup, and we are down to a five versus five matchup. Now the Kony Kony Spring are currently sitting in 12th place. They have a six and seven record this season, and they are tied with the Bell and the Angels in 12th place. As a Lolan Executor comes out, Rillaboom going with the Rock Smash on a tentacle not very effective, but Executor follows it up with the Infestation. Everyone's taking chip damage in between turns as Tentacruel is afflicted with that Infestation. Nido Queen going for the Vine Whip now onto Executor will not be very effective, and Tentacruel going to go for the Tickle. This is going to lower those physical stats of Executor, lowering both the attack and the defense. It has that 105 base attack as well, so that's a very impressive stat there. Again, that Grassy Terrain still being activated in between turns, but as I said, Coney Coney Spring currently tied for 12th place with the Bell and the Angels. Not only do they want to separate themselves from the Angels, they want to get into the Masters 8 here as Rillaboom suffers from that poison. It only has a few more turns left in it by the looks of things as that wrap continues to afflict Nido Queen as well. And then there is that infestation that Tentacruel is suffering from. Everybody having their health restored by the Grassy Train, but it changes up with those status conditions. Missed ball from Rillaboom onto Tentacruel gets a good hit there, super effective in fact. And Executor is going to go for the Sparkling Ariel. This is going to hit everyone, including Rillaboom. 
and Nader Queen holds on. It's not very effective on Rillaboom, but it's super effective on Nader Queen. Both those two Pokemon hold on. Nader Queen responding with a water type move of their own, going for the water pulse. Not very effective though. However, it is going to leave Executor confused. You can barely tell its head's dazed because it is so tall. As a fling from Tentacruel will not finish off Rillaboom, who is able to hold on. It eats the Leopard Berry. And again, it seems like it's going to be a similar situation to what happened with Serena. The grassy terrain will restore the health of Rillaboom and everyone else, but surely it will take it out of this matchup here. It needs to hold on, but I do not think it will be able to. Rillaboom is taken out of this matchup. The Dribbler Venom at this stage have taken the lead. It is still anyone's game. Tentacruel is still suffering from that infestation, however, as the grassy terrain finally disappears from this battlefield. Fitting that it leaves as a room left as well. And Tangrowth now comes out and immediately goes for the Magnet Rise. So it is going to ele be elevated with that electromagnetism here. And there is that confused status of Exeggutor. It is able to shake it off. Going for a Glare. We saw this earlier, but Tentacruel was already paralyzed previously by the Glare. As the Defend Order is activated by Nidoqueen. Boosting that defense. Boosting that special defense. Horn Drill is avoided by Tangrowth from Tentacruel. Now, Nido Queen getting those boosts is 87 base and 85 base defense and special defense, respectively. As a very little damage, oh, sorry, zero damage being done to Nido Queen, but Tentacruel is eliminated there by that Electro Wolf from Tangrowth. Exeggutor, unable to shake off the confusion, does damage itself. And now, Nido Queen going for the Fusion Flare onto the Dragon Grass type. And that is massive damage there being done to Exeggutor thanks to that critical hit. And now it is Nido King coming out to join Nido Queen and immediately goes for the Darkest Lariat onto Exeggutor. Another good hit there on the Dragon type as the Shore Up Tangro is at full strength. And Exeggutor needs to shake off this confusion, but it goes for the Lunar Dance. So Exeggutor is going to take itself out of this matchup. Kony Kony Spring need to capitalize on Exeggutor giving itself up as Nido Queen going for the Crush Claw onto Tangos gets a good hit in there and it's also going to lower Tangos defense here as out comes a Bomber Snow for the Kony Kony Spring and Nido King now going for the Mind Reader these two Nidos teaming up together this is huge as a soft boiled fails from a Bomber Snow who's at full strength and Tangos is going to go for the Alibi switch and it should capitalize now on that Lunar Dance, usually you see someone go back to the bench and then come onto the field, but switching the places, Tangrowth gets the health restored from that Lunar Dance, but Nido Queen now going for the Echoed Voice onto Tangrowth, gets that damage back onto Tangrowth, and a multi-attack now from Nido King onto a Bombastone, a fantastic hit, as a Bombastone is going to go for the beat-up, it's going to need all three hits here, but it will take out Nido Queen, Nido King is going to hate seeing that happen right in front of him as Nido Queen is eliminated after being in this matchup for almost eight minutes now and we have Tangrowth boosting its evasiveness here as its electromagnetism does wear off and his Crobat now coming out onto the field immediately going for the Skitter Smack onto a Bomber Snow and a Bomber Snow is eliminated with that super effective move there are two Pokemon remaining for the Kony Kony Spring but Nido King goes for the explosion it must have been unhappy having Nido Queen eliminated in front of it. It takes itself out, does huge damage to its own teammate, and Tangrowth is able to hold on and goes for the conversion too. It's going to change its type in here, and it is going to become a steel type Tangrowth. Out comes Venusaur's last Pokemon for the Venom, and it is Sceptile as the last Pokemon for the Spring. The Cross Poison won't affect Tangrowth because it's now a steel type, and Sceptile with the Defend Order is going to boost its defensive stats here, both that physical and special defense. As Venusaur with the string shot, it's going to lower that speed stat of both Sceptile and Tangrowth a great deal here. See if Venusaur can move quicker than Sceptile on this field as Tangrowth is going to go for the flying press onto Crobat. Very little damage being not very effective there. And now Crobat is going to go for the Rock Wrecker. And it goes for Sceptile. Gets a really good hit onto Sceptile there as Venusaur setting up an Aquarine. This could be a very good play to keep itself in the matchup. It will be restoring health in between turns as Sceptile with the Flatter 
going for its fellow grass starter Pokemon. This is going to boost Venusaur's special attack, but it will leave it confused. And Venusaur has that 100 base special attack. Tangrowth with the superpower though. On to Crobat, yet another not very effective attack there on Crobat. And it will lower Tangrowth's attack and defense. Crobat having to recharge after that Rock Wrecker Venusaur needs to shake off this confusion, but it is unsuccessful, doing damage to itself, allowing Sceptile to go for the Fell Stinger onto Crobat, and Crobat is still holding on after its third not very effective attack. Tangrowth though going for the Roar of Time goes for Venusaur, getting a great hit there onto the Cantonian starter as Venusaur's Aquaring is activated crobat is going to go for the magic room i cannot believe that crobat is still in this matchup all held items have just lost their effect thanks to that magic room venusaur needs to shake off the confusion it does it sets up the misty terrain this may not help anybody on the field at the moment and i'm sure the poison types don't mind being hit by fairy type attacks but septile now going for the spirit shackle is going to go for it it's Fellow Grass starter yet again, and Venusaur does hold on, but it can no longer escape. Tangrowth has to recharge, and there's that health beam restored by Venusaur, and it needs all the health it can get right now, as Crobat, with the sticky web, is going to have no impact on this match, because no one else is coming off the bench of the Coney Coney Spring. Venusaur does not want to do damage to itself, and it goes for Encore, which does fail, allowing Sceptile to go for the Throat Chop onto Crobat, and Crobat is finally taken out of this matchup. Tangro setting up the rain dance here. Venusaur has these two grass type Pokemon to contend with. It is all grass types on the field, in fact. But Venusaur does have that part poison type, and as it continues to have its health restored thanks to the Aqua Ring, we get a time warning now. Venusaur needs to shake off its confusion yet again. It goes for the struggle bug. This is fantastic. It'll be super effective on both of them. Takes out Tangro's. Super effective on Sceptile. It's going to lower Sceptile's special attack as well. But it is these two grass starters going head to head. Sceptile with the wrap. Looking to do that chip damage to Venusaur. See if it can do enough to take it out more than the Aqua Ring perhaps. As the Aqua Ring does restore the health of Venusaur. But here's that wrap being activated. It does take more than the aqua ring gives venusaur finally snaps out of its confusion but it goes for the curse instead of finishing off septile as we are in that countdown phase of this matchup well, it does not look like we're going to make it to overtime those venusaur's attack and defense do get boosted but septile goes for the lick and venusaur holds on i cannot believe it held on after that lick has its health restored but that wrap is going to do more damage, I believe. And Venusaur is eliminated. Sceptile has won this match for the Coney Coney Spring, getting a huge victory over the Poison types. That is fantastic for the Spring, and that is going to move them up to 10th place. They can still make the Championship Trials, whereas the Jubilee Venom stay in 6th place, and they've got a huge matchup to contend with next week as they take on the 3rd place Heart Home Horns next round. Sir Chester Frost will be facing the Coney Coney Spring next round, but our very next match will be the new Marvel Devils, who are also trying to get into the League 4, taking on the Golden Red Pounds, who are also trying to get into the Masters 8. It is practically a similar matchup next game. I cannot wait for that one, but until then, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field. And if you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, share, subscribe, but more importantly, always remember, you are awesome, and I'll see you when you see me.